Level shots fired. Next one, level shots fired. That urgent radio call for help, now retired officer Tom McMurtry vividly remembers hearing as he worked a Sinclair College night shift. Started downtown towards the Oregon District 99. He jumped in a cruiser and was there within minutes, but the chaos was just beginning. Hundreds of people, everybody yelling, sirens still going off. Dozens of area officers swarmed East 5th Street with guns drawn, searching for a possible second shooter. McMurtry used his EMT skills to help the first victim he came across. She had collapsed by a food cart right here in front of Blind Bob's. It was at least 18 minutes that the only people who were there to help were knowledgeable civilians and police officers. It was a rough patch. Just a few feet away in the alley next to Blind Bob's, McMurtry spotted another victim, a man beyond help. He and his partner grabbed two white sheets from a triage unit that had been quickly set up and covered the middle-aged man and the young woman they'd tried to help. It's the last act of kindness before we walked away and went on to the next thing. But after returning to his office, McMurtry was called back and asked to bring a fingerprint reader. By that point, it was three in the morning. The street was now quiet and the Iraq War veteran was not prepared for what he saw. That was the time that I saw more sheets. That was the time in which I actually realized how bad this was. His mission now was to fingerprint the shooter who lay dead at the door to Ned Peppers in an effort to identify him. It did not work because he had no fingerprints on file. Later that morning, McMurtry went home and told his wife of 46 years what had happened while she slept. And she says to me, I'm sorry this happened to you, and then stopped and said, actually, she said, actually, I'm glad it was you. Since that night and what he calls his small part in it, McMurtry admits he sought professional help. You, you can't do this and be unaffected. If you think you're unaffected, you're lying. Still, he returned to the Oregon District three days after the shooting and ate lunch on the patio next to Blind Bob's. Because I was not going to let the shooter take any part of the city away from me. I was not going to not come down here because of what happened here. Tom McMurtry looks forward to the day a permanent memorial is established here to remember the victims and all of the heroes who were Dayton strong when they needed to be. We need to remember the hope, not the horror because there was plenty of horror, but it, if we do it right, that is always followed by hope.